Vajnashni, who represents here Switzerland. He will talk about advanced materials engineering within uh, software-defined nanotechnology, so theoretical approach is for the scientists too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dear colleagues, I, uh, I will represent more as head of uh, R&D uh, Research and Development Center of our company, I will represent more practical uh, aspects of nanotechnology. Uh, in particular, I will talk about instrumental part. So, uh, my talk is divided into three parts. One is about uh, so-called dynamic methods for obtaining nanocomposites based on hybrid nanocomposites, based on, based on, uh, based on uh, uh, polymeric base with embedded metallic nanoparticles. The second stage, the second part is uh, uh, about uh, instrumental that we have to develop to control these processes, to fine tune the uh, parameters of the material. And the third is about uh, our vision uh, on the future of software defined technology. So, I will show on this example why it's important. Uh, this is a, a nanocomposite based on uh, polydiphenylamine with, uh, uh, with embedded silver nanoparticles. It was synthesized using single step approach when uh, at the same time uh, uh, diphenylamine monomers has been uh, oxidized and polymerized and uh, argentum ions, silver ions, has been reduced to metallic state. It's a very good method. We don't have any impurities, we don't have uh, other, uh, other issues that we, we may have in uh, two-step approaches when we first prepare the nanoparticles. Okay. Uh, but we still have a fundamental issue. We can uh, study different concentrations and obtain different results. In particular, we can use a very, very low concentration of monomers, low concentration of silver, and we will achieve a very good structure of, uh, na uh, of uh, polymeric nanofibers covered with nan nanoparticles and uh, clusters. But the fundamental issue is as follows. We cannot that easy to increase amount of silver and make nanoparticles because these processes are linked together. We, the amount of uh, organic monomers is linked to amount of metal ions being reduced to metallic state. So we must choose. That's why we need to go uh, to a so-called dynamic approach. Fortunately, we can control the growth of nanoparticles with a very high precision uh, pulses of polarization. That's how we introduce additional electrons that are needed for this reaction. Uh, so this is the schematic uh, schema of our, our uh, prototype that we have developed to control the process. It includes a potential start with uh, with additional controller that is capable to obtain information from the system and uh, at least it tries to uh, apply uh, conditionally apply bias and apply polarization pulses. Uh, another another uh, key feature of this system is that uh, polydiphenylamine is its uh, electrochromic material. So we also can utilize this feature to obtain additional information about oxidation state of our uh, growing, growing um, composite. So, but uh, the parameters of potential start or the equipment 
the prototype that we developed is listed in the table. The idea that we developed a, a ability for the developer, for, for the scientist, to uh, create a scripting represent, a representation of the process that he wants to implement in the, in the cell. So it is possible to apply polarization pose at a specific moment uh, and this will lead to a more fine control. Of course, we also can use uh, traditional approaches. We can use just uh, just tune the frequency of pulses and shape of impulses and other uh, parameters. That's also possible. But we can in situ control the process, and it, it gives us much more control. During designing this. Uh, uh, this prototype, we faced a number of challenges. We need to increase the resolution. We need to make the processing uh, to be uh, to be uh, much closer to real time that it's possible with conventional hardware available on market. Okay. So we uh, we use this prototype to to make a proof of concept research and we pretty much happy with the results. And our uh, board members and our investors, we are uh, decided to increase, to expand our cooperation with Kyiv Polytechnic Institute that doing the science for this project. And we decided to build a second prototype. And uh, it will include not only optical uh, measurements of the system, it will include uh, uh, other uh, other features like uh, uh, measuring the temperature and setting temperature, but that's more more or less obvious. We can build this with other type of hardware. The key feature is the uh, field programmable gate array that will be embedded into the hardware. What is it? It's a uh, it's a piece of hardware that allows to dynamically to create a uh, digital signal processing chip you like. If you need a uh, Fourier transform, you can do it. If you need other type of uh, other type of processing, you can do a pattern recognition in hardware. This will give us a very very low latency and very very high accuracy. Uh, we still cannot predict how how. Um, the, the time resolution and time precision will be, but it will be absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, unbeatable for <laughs> at least for today. So this is our main goal that we are building right now. Uh, what what is our vision on, on the future? Why do we need that much technology? Why do we need that much efforts and and resources to be put in this pro in this project? Because, first of all, of course, scientists will receive a tool to build more, more fine-tuned, to, to create more fine-tuned materials, of course. And again, gather more information in situ in, in about uh, the process that are uh, taking place in the cell. The second is that if we have a formalized representation, in, uh, we will have a more more stable results. It will be more uh, easy to compare results from one research group to another research group and to improve own results. And the third is most important and that's why our investors are so serious about this project is that it will simplify practical application in, in it will be make this uh, representation suitable for for commercialization, for um, ready for industry, because it's much easier. You may know the 3D technology, how it changed the, uh, the uh, our life. Today, it's, you have the model, and you can reproduce this model one to one from e from its representation that can be transferred, upgraded, modeled, and etc. So what we do is uh, will be a scripting for scientists that 
it can, uh, that will allow scientists to describe their process, to study, to learn, to, to develop, and uh, in the end, this object, this intellectual property, this method, whatever, it will be ready to, to be deployed, ready to be uh, reproduced in other places. Uh, I believe I saved some time. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. And, uh, are there any questions regarding this interesting technology? Please. It, it, it exists in, in one sample. We are working in, with the uh, Key Polytechnic Institute to, to do in, uh, actually science. And this old prototype, it's not, we don't believe it's uh, so valuable today because we already designed a new one. It will be much better, but it's already on, on, a, on, a, on a design stage. We will build it, in, I believe. Um, it's a hard question, but I, uh, I, I believe next year we will have the working prototype that you can show and, uh, and share our results. For, for lab, for lab. Are there any other questions? I have one, maybe then. Uh, what about the software? for this device, do you also develop a software which comes yes. with it or there should be some kind of uh, separate development or would it be custom development um, for any synthesis you like? For, for now we're planning uh, to, uh, to leave it uh, to leave it just script in language to be uh, like JavaScript more or less because it's relatively simple to learn and uh, more, more or less uh, uh, everybody can learn it. Uh, there are ideas to make uh, like uh, block schema algorithm uh, editor, but it's uh, it's not priority right now. We will maybe edit later, but for now it will be scripting for for like software development, more or less. Okay, thank you very much. So, don't see any more questions. Thanks again to our speaker.